What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of uh, Cool Fred's Beamer Tech. So, uh, welcome back. Um, it's been been a few weeks, but uh, I'm back in action. But uh, I want to um, I want to shout out to all my subscribers that uh, just recently subscribed to the channel. Um, I got a couple videos out there that's actually that actually got some pretty good. Um, they got some pretty good hits on them. Um, my transmission video uh, where I replaced the transmission pan. Well, basically I did a transmission service on the, uh, man, I, I'm out in the garage, got the, <laughs> got nets and stuff out here uh, trying to attack me. But uh, uh, on the transmission video, uh, transmission video got over, I wanna say like 800 and something views with like in maybe like two weeks. All right, so another thing that we're gonna be doing to the uh, X5 here is, uh, you can see I got another big old box on the floor here from uh, LCP Euro, is uh, uh, um, I'm gonna get these parts out and put them on the table and we're gonna talk about them. All right, so what we got here is a, a control arm kit. Um, we got, uh, uh, BMW referred to these as the tension struts or the um, we call them either the thrust rods or the uh, thrust rods or thrust arms so um, these right here are made by um, these are made by Lim, Lim Forder um, but if you uh, if you if you look closely, or if you um, actually research the product, uh, it's like a it's a it's a brand actually made by ZF, which is the manufacturer who makes a lot of the transmissions and stuff like that. So um, I've been putting I've I've put in, put these kits in several uh, X5s and X6s um, as an alternative to using you know the BMW control arms. I believe like this whole kit here is somewhere it's uh it's it's de it's under 500 bucks i want to say it's like somewhere around a little less than 450 and and uh one reason i, I like to use fcp euro i know you hear me mention their name a lot that's why i get a lot of my parts there are other a uh, few places out there too like ecs tuning and a couple of other um places where you can get good um OE brand or original equipment manufacturer parts. So basically they're like OE quality parts without the BMW stamp or logo um, on to them. And actually, um, I've been ordering things from FCP Euro for maybe three plus years now. Um, one of my coworkers that I used to work with actually turned me on to them. Um, the good thing about them is um, ECS tuning also does something similar to the same thing. Is you can you get uh, a lot of times you can on a lot of their repairs, whether it's a starter, uh, like a I guess like a I know with a starter you can get the aluminum bolts and uh, and like intake manifold gaskets and stuff like that. So they kind of specialize in. You can buy the part, or you can buy a parts kit. Um, they kind of. I was gonna. Um, I was gonna. Um, let me see. Replace the upper and lower. Well, not the uppers, but the. Um, so we got the thrust arms, and then we got the control arm. The basically that it sits this way. The other one kind of sits at an angle, like kind of like that. So this one sits like this. So pretty much what happens with these control arms is like this one right here, like these ball joints will wear out and you get a creaking or uh, kind of like a creaking noise or a screeching noise when turning the wheel. So you have that issue on those. And then uh, this is the arm that is bad here on 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 the uh, X5, and when I get to replacing them, I'll I'll try to show you guys what's wrong. But these bushings here, 
like the wear wear out. Uh, they call this a hydro bearing type bushing. It has a uh, hydraulic fluid in there to kind of absorb the vibrations and the shock of the you know suspension components. Um, so, but basically, one thing um, that we like about FCP Euro is that um, they they offer parts kits. So basically, they sell all these control arms in a kit, which I think they call it the forward and the 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 middle one. So this is basically uh, some people will refer to this as a wishbone or just the lower control arm, and this right here is like the forward front thrust arm, or they call it a tension strut. So as you can see, we got uh, some of the heart. Where for the cell frame bolts for the nuts. Um, yeah, I think those are the nuts for the sub frame bolts. And then we got a couple, I think these are for the thrust arm bolts. And then these right here come with uh, your your ends for your steering knuckle. So um, that's that. So the reason um, we're replacing this or I'm replacing this is because um, I just noticed when driving, you know, like going over bumps and kind of just like coming to a stop and braking, you get like a little bit of a uh, play in the suspension. So when you kind of tap the brakes, um, you kind of feel like a thumping noise, like do 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 do. Um, you know, what I'm saying as you're as you're coming to a stop and you're braking, and it's kind of something that you can kind of feel in the vehicle. And uh, a lot of BMWs, whether it's a 3 Series or 5 Series, or I want to say anything with the exception of the new, like, Mini or front-wheel drive-based X1s, like the, the new X1 and X2 platforms, uh, pretty much all standard wheel-wheel drive or all-wheel drive BMW is going to have some type of a thrust arm in there. And this bushing very commonly wears out. So... Um, these generally, you know, I know from the factory, they typically wear out, you know, any, it depends on your driving. So I say five to eight years. So if you drive more aggressively, you know what I'm saying? You may tend to wear them out a little bit quicker and it's actually, you will notice it if you got playing your suspension, especially if you got a, like a five series or a seven series, that's something you'll notice pretty much right off the rip. If you're getting any, like if you're uh, tapping the brakes, if you're going over bumps and you feel just a little discomfort in the uh, suspension. Hi guys, it's Cool Fred here. Welcome back to Cool Fred's Beamer Tech. Um, so I'm driving the X5 because <clears throat> I'm gonna replace those uh, those thrust arms and the control arm. What they refer to it as the tension strut and the lower control arm. Uh, so I'm driving this thing. Um, but pretty much, uh, I don't know if you guys heard it, but that little noise, it's kind of like a thumping noise when you, um, when you kind of come into a stop or kind of traveling over bumps, it's like a thumping noise, but it's definitely something you could feel in the front suspension in the front of the vehicle. That's because those, uh, thrust rod bushings are, are worn. Uh, sometimes they refer to those as hydro bearings. So uh, when I get the vehicle up in the air, I'll show you guys uh, like that they're, you know, how they crack and leak. So the rubber has got some tears in it and some cracking. So I'll show you guys that. Alrighty, we got the uh, 2013 X5 on the lift. Um, I know I mentioned earlier that I was going to show you guys what worn thrust rod bushes look like. So these are the bushings here and certain areas of them you can kind of see tears and cracks. Let's see if I can zoom out a little bit. It's just kind of maybe a bad angle on my camera here because I'm not able to get as up close. But you see a few tears and cracks in the bushing and the rubber part. So um, that's signs that they wear. Um, they also got hydraulic fluid in there that, that leaks out over time that's generally what this little uh well that's actually dust and dirt 
from the dirt. But every now and again, if you see like a little black spot on there, um, that would be an indication that there is some dust and dirt. But I want to say you can see some of the tears right there in the bushing. So I got my pry bar here and I'm going to check for playing in this bushing. And just a little bit of movement. So pretty much if you get a sense of movement, you know that that bushing is worn. I'm gonna go ahead and um, start getting these replaced. So I'm probably gonna start with this one, then I'm gonna do, uh, then I'll probably do the second one. This lower control on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with those. All right, so these are the parts right here that's going in. Um, these are all the parts that's in that limb forwarder parts kit. Um, the control arms have, they have some uh, markings on them to identify left and right. So you'll see an L on the thrust arm. This control arm has an L. This one has an R. And then this particular one right here has an R stamp right there. And uh, you can share it. On the thrust arms you get uh, new bolts for the ball joints. And you get hardware for your nuts. Um, we we'll have to reuse the bolts from this kit, but you do get nuts. So that's what's going in. It's all the new stuff right there. All right, I got both my wheels off of here. Uh, I got my trim panels down here. Them, them panels out of the way. And I got this right here tied back so I can get uh, right there. So I'm gonna loosen this bolt and nut. And I'm gonna use these pliers to, to hold right here. And I'm gonna zip this off with an impact. Um, let me see what size that is. Um, I got an inch and 1 16th, but I think it's a 27 millimeter. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that uh, thrust arm out of there. And then I'm gonna work on this right here and get this out. All right, I got the passenger side done. So uh, this is what they look like installed. Um, I, I have on the LED light, so it, you may see lines going through the screen, I guess because of the LED lights that I have. It goes away when I cover it up. But uh, these are the new control arms. Um, you probably want to, you know, leave this to a professional shop or something like that because uh, you got to make sure the vehicle is safe and uh, you're dealing with several different control arms. Uh, so, but uh, if you're going to be safe doing it, um, going with these limb formidable, um, this middle one looks close to stock, but this, this other one here, the, uh, the thrust arm itself, uh, it's a little bit thicker, so I can get the other one out. Um, the old one came out real easy, came out like a breeze, but going in with the new one, um, I had to take this one all the way out to put, so basically, if y'all are gonna do it, I would recommend removing this one first and then take this one out. That'll, that'll, that'll let you get the thrust arm out. And then when you go back together, put the thrust arm in first down here and then put this one in uh, next. So the reason I got this, uh, we call this a third leg or, leg or um, support jack. I got that there to kind of um, preload the suspension before I tighten up all the bolts. So I've already tightened everything down, but basically that's kind of like representing um, like what it would be if the vehicle was on the ground at regular ride height. Uh, so that's uh, what's re recommended per all your repair instructions and stuff like that to preload the suspension. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and knock out that other side. All right, so here we go. Um, I got all the old stuff out of the driver's side. About to get ready to put the uh, the new stuff in so I got the new uh, thrust arm in on the left side so basically you see how I have it angled like this you got to kind of put it in at an angle so you can so you can clear the uh, the CV the CV boot so um, this arm here is a little thicker in this area 
not much, but just by a little bit. So you kind of got to do that. And then what I normally do is uh, just kind of just like uh, just move it over into place here. So uh, it, this is where it, it's gonna live right here. So it goes right there, and then I'm gonna slide my bolt through there. All right, so I got um, got this one in. Slip a bolt through here, and then the other side goes over here. So pretty much, I didn't I didn't have time to pretty much like show like a full like disassembly or reassembly because I'm kind of on a on a time crunch because uh, shop closes down at a certain time, so I gotta be out. Um, um, but real quick, um, before I get everything in and tighten up. I just kind of put this this bolt through here so I can kind of remember where it went. So but this one's shorter. The one at the subframe is shorter than the one right here. This one's a little bit longer. Uh, I believe that's it. Yeah, uh, so this arm reel right here, um, pretty much uh, what I normally do is I'll pull this control arm back. Well, the fork. For the, and then just kind of feed it in through there. So that's pretty much how I get that one in. But it's a little tough for me to hold the camera and put that in at the same time. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that in and get this thing buttoned up. All right, so pretty much what I found is, uh, well, I knew this because of what I did on the other side, but basically I just kind of had to move this fork, just kind of force it over a little bit. And then this this slides right down in here. All right, so on the driver's side here, I get everything back together. I'm gonna put the trim panels back on and put this uh, panel back here back up. But uh, yeah, everything back together. Um, I got all the control arms on the front installed on both the driver and passenger side. So uh, I'm just gonna put these trim panels on, put the wheels on, and. Uh, Take it on down the road, see how it drives. Um, I may have to do an alignment to it, so uh, I'm probably gonna do that tomorrow. Uh, but this thing should drive, you know, uh, the, the steering, as far as the steering and, and braking feel, it should be a lot firmer, should handle a lot better too. So, thank you guys for checking out Cool Fred's Beamer Tech. Have a good one.